everybody. You're listening to What Are You Doing in Denmark, the podcast that helps you make Denmark make sense. My name is Derek, and I am joined by Conrad Molden. Hello. And Brooke Black. Hello. And today we are talking about everything that's going on in Denmark right now, and we're going to catch you up with the Danish news. Brooke, I know you've got some important updates on on the pigs. Yes, so um, this came to my attention fairly recently, but the University of Copenhagen has been studying behavior with pigs, I believe using AI. I don't know how they do that, but they have di- uh, they figured out how to find 19 different sounds to see whether they're happy or not, different scenarios. The latest update is that pigs in captivity, or, or in conventional farms, I should say, oh, yeah. <laughs> are, are really stressed out more than uh, pigs in outdoor settings. I believe it's 25% that are in conventional farms are stressed and 8% in uh, more of like a big like a bigger farm setting. Hmm. It's I, th- I think I saw an announcement for this project two years ago and there's been an update and I was trying to kind of piece it all together. But the short headline is that pigs are really stressed. And um, yeah, hopefully some of them are happy too, but I'm not surprised. I want to know about that 20% that's actually loving it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like majority of them are pissed off and some of them are just like, oh, I like Some of them are babe, <laughs> babe, just like yeah. making friends with a duck and like <laughs> traversing the farm. And I love that like AI had to figure this out. Like we couldn't just... Yeah. Ascertain that pigs don't like being in captivity. Yeah. You can read pigs' minds. What is going to be next? Is it going to, you know, what are they saying? What are these dogs? Is it, you know, what animals could be next? And are they all stressed out? And and actually, I thought about this. What if instead of using this knowledge for good, we then use it for, oh, well, we don't want them so stressed so they taste better. Mm. Right? Say, doesn't, so it's like, is like the that? science behind this like the companies that are like, we want our pork mm. to taste better? How do we de stress that? Stress free pulsa. <laughs> Isn't there something like there's, um, some animal <laughs> this is awful and i'm sorry for all the vegans that are and vegetarians that are listening to this but is, is there an animal where they try to purposely stress it or scare it because the chemical makes it am i no, are you thinking about up? foie gras perhaps that's the shoving yeah. the yeah that's where they forced feed the goose oh. so that yeah. its liver becomes inflated oh yes yeah. okay. Yes. That would be stressful. Yeah. 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 That's pretty you, awful. You don't want to do that. No. It's kind of being like an all you can eat buffet and trying to get like your max amount of money worth of it. Oh, my friend <laughs> orders that. He's like a fancy man and we go out to dinner and he orders that all the time and I always have this guilt about it. And yeah. So, I mean, it is fancy. It's What can we do for the pigs? I don't know. And I mean, I think uh, with sh- lamb and sheep, like that's a big thing. Like if they're stressed and cows too, right? Like it, mm. t- it affects the taste. Because something like Wagyu beef, they like massage the cows yeah. and they because they mm. try to get them like as as heavy as possible, I mm. believe. And all of it sounds pretty pretty bad. I'm I'm wondering the situation with the pigs. I used to live near a pig farm uh, in Yulan that was out in the open. It was by the train passed it all the time. They seemed pretty happy. They had a lot of space. I wouldn't know. I wasn't using my AI technology <laughs> out the right. like with my little like out the train window like trying it's to like, test like ChatGPT. Are these pigs happy? Yeah, <laughs> are these pigs happy? But I. You know, for how much pork product there is, um, you know, I feel like you never see the actual conventional pig places because they're hidden away, like from any roads. And I feel like you, Conrad, were saying you have experienced one of these. Yes, exactly. I have been... uh you know, they, that's, that's saying that Denmark, there are more pigs than people. Yes. Mm. But the strange thing is you never see them. Yeah. So The people or the pigs? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> and living out in Yuland, I had a friend whose uncle, something like this, owned one of these facilities and said, you want to come? And what was really awkward was there was a real disconnect between what we were witnessing and his explanation. So he was walking around acting like everything was fine, being like, you know, rah, 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 you know, it's yeah. mid land, so flu, 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 yeah. flu. Uh, pigs over here and over here. And it was unbelievably horrible to see. They had very, very small pens where the pig, it's like Tetris. So when one pig moved, the oh, other one had just enough God. space. Like there was one pig's worth of space in the pen. And in the middle, it would just have this huge metal chute. And sporadically, that would just spray food all over them. <sighs> Floors were concrete, stank. I mean, really really reeked just metal pens all the way around artificial lighting you're just there's no windows so you're just in this huge facility and from where they're born to where they are then overfed to where they are killed is all within the same space 
and the noise as well. Pigs have this really hot, it's almost like a human sound yeah. when they squeal and when they whine and all you can hear is distress. Oh. Oh and it was God. so unpleasant because obviously he he ran this thing, so he was so used to it. So as we're walking around, he's just acting like everything is totally, totally normal. And when we left, I was deeply traumatized. I mean, there was he wanted to continue parts of the tour. I was like, I don't want to see the killing floor. Mm. I don't want to see any of that. It's horrible enough to see how these poor animals live. Wow. It would encourage you to not eat meat, I think, like when you're yeah, actually yeah, like, you know, seeing it and seeing like how, you know, how it all works. And I have a fear about that. It, it's, it almost seems like a, if you know somebody mm. that has a pig farm, <laughs> then you can go see them. It's not like they're like giving up like tours, like, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's I, a reason I, they don't, right? And <clears throat> in the grocery store, you see them so happy, like in the videos, you know, right by the pork section. It's like, our beautiful pigs from Born Home or wherever they are. And it just looks like a movie. It does look like, babe, they're just having a great time. And the girls, like my daughters always wanted to just stop and watch the TV. And I'm like, I'm feeling this is sinister. And I know that you're telling us that it's good and they have a happy life. But mm. according to AI... <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised we needed AI and that it wasn't a high, like, it, how was it not 100% <laughs> stressed? Yeah. I would be miserable. Yeah. yeah. That's my that's my news. <laughs> that was the news that I have. <laughs> well, a, a, a slightly happier uh, piece of news is kind of cool. So Copenhagen City Government in the, the budget for next year has set aside money, uh, 500,000 kroner, to explore the possibility of hosting the Olympics in Denmark. Wow. Yeah. So um, the, so the study is basically just to like assess the viability of a bid and see if it's something that would actually make sense. But they've got some sort of cool ideas. Uh, the we can't next... get Taylor Swift, but we could get the Olympics. <laughs> right. I'm, that, that's something that I'm not going to lie. I'm a little bit uh, skeptical or worried about. However, you know, some, uh, I would say medium-sized global events or even intercontinental, continental events, you know, wide events like the Euros were uh, were held here. Right. Denmark has hosted Eurovision, things like that yeah. in the past. So it's like there is the capacity to have some more than just national events here. And it's something that at least is going to be considered. So the next two Summer Olympics are set for Los Angeles and then right. uh, Brisbane. Uh, really? Yeah. Hmm. But potentially then this could be something that would be to potentially host the 2036 Olympic Games. Wow. Oh. Yeah. So some interesting ideas. One would be to have a, a smaller and more sustainable Olympic. So oh, sounds very, very on hoogly. brand, right? Yeah. Mm. Very hoogly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, only 10 tickets for the Olympics. <laughs> only, only 10 tickets. Guest Belletta for all of the families of the yeah. athletes. <laughs> There's just a naked person section. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, next to the smoking area. Yeah. 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 Um, all, all bowling becomes a <laughs> Olympic event. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be like all handball and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Some cool ideas. So one would be um, to potentially have archery uh, down Newhound. Oh. Yeah, cool. so like right at Newhound. I think like... I love uh, that. Like, like we always hoped, you know, mm -hmm. maybe. And uh, I'll sort of have a, a cruise ship uh, in the harbor for the Olympic Village, which... Okay. There's a lot of cruise ships there already, so mm. uh, I guess it it's <laughs> makes sense. I wonder how, what other countries would be making that bid as well, like how yeah. they all stack up, you know? Yeah. Because um, I'm wondering with the infrastructure and like with the size, how that yeah. would work. When you That's just, more what I worry about. Having a smaller, sustainable, more Olympic sounds really great in theory, but I think it's like, pretty tough. When, it's the uh, Olympics. Like, the, like, but I have a plus five. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm supposed to, I'm on the list. <laughs> and look, having been, uh, I was super fortunate, like for our summer holiday, we went to Paris and so saw cool. the Olympics this year. It, it was amazing. I was living vicariously through you. Oh, it, it, it was incredible. And the stuff that they did for that, they, they certainly didn't think smaller and sustainable. No. I feel like every everything was big. The really cool thing was they they took so many elements of Paris, which is already a, a fantastic city, so many landmarks, so much history, and they made it part of the Olympics, part of the games. It was mm -hmm. like the whole city was part of the spectacle. So, I love um, that for the opening ceremony in the U.S. broadcast, they cut out the blue dude, but everything else stayed. It's like, yeah. why Why this This is too much for you? This man on a plate with fruit? Is there like, were some weird When like, there's like choices. so many of the things going on the runway and like, you know, I, I was amazed at the, you know. <laughs> the little controversies. Yeah, there probably would be a, yeah, 
So like, oh, we probably... can't show this blue guy. We don't know what's going on with this guy. We don't know what it means. <laughs> I'm sure there would be. Did like... you see the blue guy? I did. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole thing was like quite a spectacle, and it had such deeper meaning that I had to like really read about online, like to unpack mm-hmm. afterwards, because I was like, oh, this, and like, uh, like so many people got all the references, and I was like, I did not get any of those, mm-hmm. but I thought it was really cool to watch, and it's because of like, French history, and I, I could see them have like a, a Little Mermaid, but they would have her in like a full like, oh my god, oh, yeah. like wearing a frock with a. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, what could it be? Like, like oh what no, would the have opening a ceremony mermaid. be? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just worry that if it was a Danish small sustainable opening ceremony, it would be too hoogly, right? Like, yeah. mm. Begida would come out with, like, a tray of Hinbest knitters that <laughs> she's made, and, like, hand it, and everyone's got, like, a paper napkin, and it's raining because they chose a really bad time in July, <laughs> Yeah, you know? And then everything's extremely hoogly. It's like, uh, no one's checking tickets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, People are yeah. Just Everyone swamping. brought a mail packet. Yeah, They're just like, got I got my, yeah. my rye bread here and my yeah. Liverpool style. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh, like they're doing the Olympic crazy. swimming. Regular people are just overtaking them. You know, just <laughs> the cycling events. The, the, it's like, we're following the cycling. No, that's just nerve roll at 8 a.m. Yeah. Like, that's not they're an Olympic just event. just going to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they have to do it now. I think we should put extreme pressure on the Danish government to do it just to see the hoogle <laughs> levels be, go out of control. It would be great. It, I, think it's, I think it could be cool. But it's just always like, I'm like the, the things that we have money for. Like, we're going to cancel, like, national holidays but uh, mm. to save money. But, like, sure, let's throw 500 million kroner or 500,000 kroner at seeing if maybe we could do a small Olympics. Hang on. Makes the me. amount of money alone that bakeries oh in Copenhagen will make. Right. Yeah. They only need to sell, like, a thousand canal snarl and the GDP <laughs> will grow. Yeah. <laughs> well, I get it. I mean, we've got all that Ozempic money now, so we can just <laughs> That's maybe right. do the Olympics. But I just, I don't know about, like... Powered by Ozempic. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone's an athlete. Lean and mean. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody made weight. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll we'll see how it goes. It's 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 a cute idea. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's great. I think it would be really interesting to use a lot of the kind of like some of these larger than life figures, like the Little Mermaid or like uh, the Ugly Duckling, or these things that are you know. I feel like sometimes people people forget or. Danish because Disney took them, you know, yeah, or, you know, sure. yeah. reclaiming some of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about move it out of Copenhagen, get it to go to Silkeborg? <laughs> yeah, we can, yeah. There's plenty well, of room. It'd be like horses uh, yeah. like, yeah, in the prison. They should seriously actually just move it to Yuland. Yeah. Because there are so many Scandic hotels that are empty out yeah. there. That's true. Herning, yeah. the toast of Herning. Yeah. All of Herning is just the Olympic village. <laughs> yeah. You have your own house, there's a garden. <laughs> they're just waiting. <laughs> I'm always wondering when they're gonna like give Billund an update mm-hmm. as a as a town as a village with so many people yes. coming in and out. It's like there's still the one bakery, the one. Uh, oh, they're like... really trying. I've done shows at the. They have facilities there for the families of the people who work, and it's amazing. They have pools and they have gyms and they have squash courts and restaurants and bars and cafes, and people still commute in. Yeah, they don't want to live in Billund. Yeah. Mm. Tiny itty bitty Billund. Yeah. yeah. They're like, I would still rather live in Hanning or Ecast or Aarhus. Well, E-Cast, the next spot for the Olympics. E-Cast. I, I think oh. even Lego is building, they're expanding in Copenhagen, I think, for that reason. Do you think so? They're building like a Because no one wants to here. work yeah, in Billund. So. I was about to say they're building the Olympic Stadium. They're out, building out, of Lego. out of Legos. Oh my God. Not a bad idea. That I, whole opening, oh my oh God, that'd be God. so good. They could do like a Lego movie version of like the opening ceremony. Well, yeah. That's one thing they want to do is have a, uh, have a removable stadium. And I, that's the first thing I thought of. Was out of Lego. got to be made out of Legos because yeah. then you can just pile it up and take yeah, it Yeah, just give else. a bit to all the kids. Yeah, take some home. Right. Everybody gets a bit of the Olympic. Lego and Duplo. Lego for- medals. You know, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a great idea. Is it Lego is plural in Denmark? Because I feel like when I say Legos, I'm the only one saying Legos. I do not add an S. <laughs> you don't add an S? I don't. It's Singular. just so many Lego is Lego. Lego. Legos, okay. Lego, Lego. I uh, had to unlearn saying Legos. Yeah. Like, where's my Legos? <laughs> <laughs> True. I probably, now that I think I feel like it. you just said it with an S. Yeah, I think I did too. That's the first thing I thought of. Was I like, got made out of Legos. You're like, you I, caught n- me. I never say I it with an S. I would never say Legos. I never do that. <laughs> I only say Legos. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm. Yep, we're you, learning. You caught me. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah, yeah. I think that would be great. We've we've nailed it. I think the Olympic Committee should come to us for yeah. ideas. We, we've we've figured out a lot so far. We've done yeah. all the work. Just pay us the 500,000 kroner. Yeah. We've done the work. Mm-hmm. Just move everybody off of Foon 
to their nearest family and then turn Foon into oh, yeah. everything Olympics. Just turn Odense into a massive stadium. Ever since I started going to these smaller amusement parks in Denmark, like regional ones, people have alerted me to some of the ones on Foon. And it's literally just jumping off of like a high jump onto a pillow. So like some mm. of the infrastructure is already there. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, They're very like proud. just using your body to like fling it down like a hill and like that's the amusement park. I, mean, I, I think we all saw like the highlights of the Olympic break dancing. So like, they're not really taking it that seriously. Oh my anymore. god! Everyone's going to be that chick for Halloween. Yeah. You know it. Oh, you yeah. know it. Yeah. Well, so actually, like, I'm still under trying to understand how Danes celebrate Halloween. I feel like um, it's not as big a thing, but everyone loves to plan, so they should be planning for their Eftoros Feria. But like, I think in our neighborhood they put up the decorations the day of, which is crazy to me. I'm like, mm. do you love this ho oh, holiday kind of like or not? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I get confused because I'm already thinking about it because I'm American. But I think like <laughs> no one else is ready to like be talking about this yet. They're like, summer just ended. Can we not with the pumpkins? But I feel like then all the promoted posts I'm seeing are like, book your afterwards for you. Oh, I've been drinking pumpkin spice lattes all week. Can, are, they, yeah. are they here? <laughs> I started last week when it Does was still hot. Does Espresso House do one or just yes, Starbucks? they do. Okay. Yeah. And the Swedes are very American of this. What I've noticed with Halloween, I feel like Danes only go with like the scary horror version, but they haven't quite of like costume. Not like the cultural but moment. I haven't ones. called the cultural moment ones. Like yeah. I think the breakdance woman. Yeah. I forget her name, but it's mm. uh, Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Ray Gun. Right. Yeah. So like being Ray Gun for Halloween would be yeah. Everybody in the yeah. US I think that. that's too. Uh, I don't think Danes have figured out that level. like you I'm, can be non-scary and you can be ironic and you can be maybe the not, adults like the teens. The teens. Maybe. I don't know. Anna Hemmingson usually around Halloween has some pretty good ones. They people mm. take pictures. Like there was one person okay. who dressed as the "You Have to Return" scat or Zop girls oh, screen. Amazing. <laughs> and obviously, post COVID, everybody dressed as the coronavirus. Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or toilet paper. Yeah. Yeah. So I think or some people can paper. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So some have figured it out. I just. But feel it's like, not the yeah. American level where people literally burn their own house to yeah. make it into yeah. a derelict <laughs> ruin with real ghosts. And yeah. Shit, you know, and ha people. Well, and the giant skeletons from like um, uh, Costco. Like, there's a huge werewolf now that everybody wants in their front yard. They're oh, freaking huge. Inflatable. And like they're not inflatable. Things. They're oh. like it's like a like movie quality from wow. Costco. Just like you know. We used to have. I don't know if I don't think it's still done in the U.S. But we used to have. <laughs> they they would basically make orange trash bags that had painted on jack-o'-lanterns. So you just put them over a bush? <laughs> I was like, I've now looking back, I'm like, my parents just tricked me just into raking trash. all the damn leaves yeah. Yeah. and filling up these trash bags and called it decorating. Yep. That's really clever. That's how they got me. Yeah, I don't think they clever. do it anymore because now, like, our generation figured it out and we we're like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not. It ends with I forgot me. that it is like a fall leaf bag. Yes. Like, because, oh my God. I was like, amazing. no, you just gave me a rake and told me to decorate. And yeah. that was not decorating. That was not fun for me. <laughs> I want to decorate my house with spooky dolls. So my kids have been, we've been going to all the Genbru Plus uh, and like finding old. I'm like, can you just smell it to make sure nobody peed on it? Like mm. look for bed bugs. Cause they're, now they're all mm. like hiding out in the basement right now. All these like, dolls that I've, we've collected so far, but oh. I want to like really do it up. Pretty, like in a good gross way and the that's kids are really creepy. excited I like about it. it let's see if I can pull it off what a but. cool mom that's really creepy thank but you I think so I think I I'm like think I'm the only person that loves Halloween <laughs> like, it's better than raking <laughs> yeah that's true that's true and I, I mean all the leaves are blowing off the trees right now it is definitely fall <laughs> yes. right now we skipped right to there's gonna be like another summer week next week I think it will yeah it? it's gonna go back to being hot again yeah I get confused yeah, it is a bit confusing. I, I say dress for the weather you want, not for the weather that is happening. I, I'm wearing I shorts and t-shirt. Yeah. Yesterday there was a man in shorts and t-shirt and flip-flops who didn't check the weather forecast and he had like a six-month-old infant and it was like holding oh, a newspaper no. over his like oh, no. running in the rain and I'm like, I, I mean, I feel for them. But, oh, uh, just And he told the baby like, oh, there's no bad normal, clothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> oh, no right. bad weather, only bad clothing. <laughs> Talking of uh, news around the weather, yeah. did you know that on uh, the 9th of September, it was the first tropical night in Denmark, which means that you have 24 hours above 20 degrees Celsius on <laughs> average in the country. What? Was it the first ever or the first this year? Uh, since records began, but they say that... They <gasps> since records began? <laughs> but they say it's hard to say because Time of the of technology we have. But since 1947, around 1947, there might have been a similar circumstance. Wow. But back then they used like a thumb and a guess <laughs> to work out the weather, didn't they? So... <laughs> <laughs> but on the day before, on the 8th, it was an average of 21.3 across Denmark. Yeah, so it has been a record-breaking summer. In terms of heat or humidity? I know, we're there, the humidity it was is the really other factor. That's why it was so tropical, because you had 100% humidity and you had above Gross. 20 degrees Celsius. Mm. 
This I oh I cannot deal with humidity. It was unbearable. I don't know about you guys. My bedroom was like a, a sauna. It was yesterday. Bad. It was uh, bad. Day, oh no, yeah. the day before. Yeah, yeah so gross. Sunday so night gross. was unbearable. I went and got um you know those summer duvets like I I I didn't do this for. We're not really duvet people as Americans, so I I didn't really do duvets until getting here. We just do yeah. what you do Com- comforters. Yeah, we have and a we top, have top sheet, sheets. a top sheet, a and comforter. a comforter. What's it's that? very strange. Is that a person that lies in your bed and it's tells you you're a good person? Yeah. <laughs> it it's just comforts like a, you. Like, like, it's the blanket like, without the sheet covering it. Yeah, a blanket without a sheet on it. Like imagine the duvet, duvet right. just without a sheet over it. And when it. do you? When is this thing clean? Or you just <laughs> roll around in your own sheet, feet? The top sheet protects the top sheet you from pr- getting the comforter yes. dirty. Yes. Okay, it's very. Strange. Oh, that's why. Okay, when I go to hotels in the US and it doesn't make any sense, and I feel like I'm getting inside an onion. Where I'm yes. like, what the yes. hell is? <laughs> where is my duvet? Yeah. Why is there a bed sheet not attached properly? <laughs> it's very strange. That's what I, it is. Yeah, I don't know. We figured out a more complex way to make bedding. Fall off of you in the yes, night. Yes, totally. Night. Extra, yeah. like extra stuff. Okay. Yeah. It makes, du- duvet yeah. cover ma- totally makes sense. Yeah, so I, I got summer, yeah, the, the summer ones that are supposed to like be cooler, I guess, like not mm-hmm. as heavy. I switched them and then my my husband was like, these, these are warmer than normal. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I forgot to tell you, they're summer duvets, so they're actually cooler. It's just warmer outside. Like it it, it didn't click for him that it was so Okay, so what so you're telling us is you gaslit your husband. I guess. <laughs> It's, it's, that's my love language. <laughs> what are you talking about, Mike? Okay, wait, it's in you, your head, you, dude. It, no, you have no idea. That thermometer is lying. Yeah. It's not 35 it's not degrees 35 in degrees. here. No, I think you have a fever. <laughs> I'm still confused Bad about rest. the summer duvet. Summer duvets, they're the ones that are like supposedly lighter, I guess. and like. Uh, but he said it felt heavier. He said it felt like it was making him warmer. <laughs> so no, no, it's I just don't hot under- outside, Maybe darling. I don't understand summer duvets, but mm. it was like the ones that are like not the warm duvet but they're like the cool duvet they're supposed to be like I didn't even know about this yeah my wife's also into summer duvet okay I I just take it out and use them don't you just do a sheet in this weather it's so hot it's unbearable I have to bring top sheets back from the US yeah it's roasting hot we um, for the first time in four years are doing the split duvet now me and my husband yeah Mm. which is actually really nice like I don't know if it's like our marriage is ending because it's like (laughs) separate blankets separate like because I never that's why I didn't want to do it in the first place but it actually makes so much sense so I can just like wrap the whole thing around me and I totally get it I like to sleep like a mummy like I like to have it yeah like a perfect cocoon but when I'm when I'm alone in a hotel room, I want, I actually want the full one because then mm. I feel like I'm just in one section of the mm. bed because and trying to put the two over me, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. As, like, I just want to wrap the whole thing around me. If that. I'm going to hog the bed, then I want, like, because oh. otherwise I'm just taking this little no, that, section up. That That's logical. I, with two people, I get to be in my own, yeah, or my own. That's valid. Room, like I just say like that. Okay, so tropical, you were saying. So it's the most tropical weather that Denmark's had. Yeah. So this is the new Fiji. <laughs> Denmark exactly. is the new Fiji. Exactly. But I've read that a lot of people are coming to Denmark for the cooler weather. Right, exactly. the cool-cation. Like people yeah. is I mean, the meanwhile. stupidest word I've ever heard. Like you, A cool-cation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. which doesn't rhyme with anything. Like, no. it wasn't a hot-cation, and it's no. not like it's not like a staycation. That rhymes with and vacation. And nobody says vacation. They say holiday. Holiday? Col- no. Holiday? That sounds like an illness. It sounds like yeah. colic. Uh, yeah. My stomach hurts. My, my baby's colic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was very, very warm. Unseasonably warm. Unseasonably but aren't they, warm. isn't that everything now? It's like the hottest day on record, the wettest day on record. It's been the wettest year on record. Like, <laughs> the way you know, Danes report the weather is like... They yeah. find something. But I like what you say about how it's not just small talk. I mean, I know it's you're not important. the first person to say that, but yeah. like it really registered when like you were posting about it like a bit, like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And I was like, it's true that it is like a hot, a hot topic, <laughs> a yeah. cold topic, a cool topic. And it, it is. It's inter- like a genuine thing. It's like, oh, how is it going to be in the, you know, in you a little while? Know, like, yeah. Yeah. I know because Oxfam uh, was reporting on this uh, hot weather in Denmark and was projecting that in 10 years at this time, it will be 41 degrees oh. Celsius. Yeah. Oh, that's too much yeah no i can't do it we were talking me and Tarek about how our bodies like react to heat like just not in a good way like when i lived in la at most of the year it was too hot and my Mm. body was just like swollen and just like not doing good i've lost all of the adaptation i had for warm weather from living yeah isn't that weird you then adapt to whatever it affects me much worse now Mm. my friends in california that visited the one who brought me the febreze was like it looks really cold there am i gonna need like a jacket i'm like you'll be fine like it's not that cold and it's like they're used to just it being like perfect and warm whenever people ask what to pack to come here what to i'm like just bring everything i love when there's the random like facebook like uh copenhagen 
Copenhagen Facebook group. Yes. It's like, I'm coming in like next August the 13th. What will the weather be? <laughs> right. Like, what should I be wearing? And, and it's like, what the fuck? I don't know. There's like, always three Danes that like read these people to riot act to yeah. like yeah. in the comments. And I'm like, oh, calm I don't down. E- yeah, I don't it's, even know. <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm not going to read these nice. comments. <laughs> it's uh, also feeling a little humid in here as well. Yeah, yeah. it is. It's getting We're having our here. own tropical <laughs> tropical version. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to have to call it. And uh, <laughs> we hope that you stay cool, whatever the uh, whatever it's like outside when you hear this. Uh, <laughs> vote for the Olympics and, uh, <laughs> and go check on your pigs. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> <Hi, hi. laughs> Check on your pigs, folks. Check on your yeah. pigs. Check your pigs aren't distressed. Make sure your pigs are doing okay. I hope we don't get any angry pig farmers. Oh, the pigs are good. <laughs>